Hey, I wanted to uh, reach out. We've had a lot of people that have uh, been contacting us that have been requesting uh, what to do, how they can help. Uh, I want to talk to you about what's happening uh, currently with what's taking place in Afghanistan. Uh, one of the things that's so important, and just let me just say this, uh, so many people have been saying, what do we do to help? How do we, how do we serve? Uh, what can we do besides praying? Let me, can, let me just say something significant. Prayer is probably one of the most powerful things on the planet. I'm telling you now, um, we will see a transformation come in Afghanistan. You mark my word, Afghanistan will be a Christian nation within eight years. You mark my word. I know in my heart of hearts that God has that nation. That nation belongs to Jesus Christ. It does not belong to an Islamic regime. It does not belong to any false prophet or any false religion that is under demonic power and that crushes and destroys its people who believe they, they think they're doing the truth and following the truth, but they are following deception and a lie. That is not ungracious and un unkind. Let me say this. Everyone watching this, when you meet Muslims, love them. You be kind to them, be loving, compassionate, pray for them. Ask them if you can pray for them right now and reveal to them who the true Jesus is. They have been misled. They have been deceived to believe that Jesus is just a prophet. They do not believe him to be God. They do not believe him to be the son of God. They believe him to be only a prophet and he is a lesser prophet than Muhammad. Now, having said that, I wanna say this and I wanna make this very clear. I want to make sure that you give it, that you have an understanding that when you reach out to Muslims, love them, show compassion to them. This is not uh, the followers' fault. This is a deception from the enemy himself. But let me say this: we're going to talk about some prayer points here, and we're going to talk about some action steps. Uh, people, many people have been asking, are because there's so many ministries that are saying we can't get money there, we can't get. There are things we are looking into and we have, we believe, strong ways to be able to help them and get things to them. Resources will be coming to them. I cannot explain to you why that would be foolish on my part, especially on something like this. This is probably being watched by even members of the Taliban. But we are, we are putting things together to be able to help and to, and to get them food. Right now, there's a massive demand for food. Uh, the Taliban is watching when they took over the NDS, which is the secret police in Afghanistan. Uh, Iran also has secret police. But when they took over that, they're looking at all the information of Christians that will be blocking them from markets. I've already heard from some people that they, they are being blocked from markets from buying food. One of the things that we're trying to do is see how to get our brothers and sisters food uh, to sustain them. And then there are several other things that we're trying to see that we can help. Uh, the biggest concern, if you're watching any of the videos from the news, you're not seeing women on any, hardly any of the news networks. If you are, you're probably seeing old footage. The Taliban was not permitting uh, any women to be able to walk the streets alone or to be out by themselves. They had to be with a husband or a brother or a father, uh, or they could be beaten, even stoned if they were by themselves. I mean, this is a demonic, harsh regime. And so it's it's something to to understand that that that's the reason why that you're not seeing a lot of of women that are that are out there uh, currently and that are uh, that are visible in any of these videos that you're seeing at the airport or anything like that. Now, one of the things that we need to to be praying. There's several prayer points that I want to make, but first I want to say this. Our ministry, we have a, a ministry to the Middle East. For those of you who don't know, we are starting schools throughout the Middle East. Uh, I will be heading to the Middle East uh, this weekend and we'll be there all next week. Um, at this point, I don't want to say where, but we, I will be there and we will be doing some things and we'll be working on some things regarding helping our brothers and sisters uh, in Afghanistan and, and many other things that we're working on. But we are starting schools there to train them in, in uh, the underground church in, in operating the power of the Holy Spirit. Many of the men that are there are wanting to return to Afghanistan. They want to see the women, their mothers, their sisters, their, their daughters get out because one of the first things that will happen, and the Taliban has done this before, is any infidel woman, any Christian woman or woman from another religion are free to be raped. They are free to be taken. They're free to be terribly abused. 
uh, because they're infidels, there's no sin consequence, basically, according to these radical uh, Muslim perspectives and beliefs. So one of the things that 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 is going to happen, we're trying to find out how do we help the women get into safety. These are our sisters that have been leading and helping the underground church. I'm going to tell you right now, I would take one Afghan woman out on the streets with me doing power evangelism than 10 Afghan men. And I love my Afghan brothers. I mean, I love them. The women are as bold as lions. They are fearless. You know why? And it's part of it is because there's nothing left for them to take from them. Everything's been stripped away already. There's nothing left to take. And so they're fearless and they're bold. But what we need to pray for is there's several key points in prayer. I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. But for those who have, we've been bombarded by people saying, how do we give? We are going to put my link in bio for International Life Corps, which is our um, uh, Muslim world missions. And right now, everything kind of going into that right now, we, a lot of that has been set up for our schools throughout the Middle East to train the underground church in the Muslim world. Uh, but we're taking those funds and applying it to helping them with relief at this point in time. So everything that you contribute to that, and just so you know, we raised tens of thousands of dollars last year for the underground church, uh, in Pakistan. We sent every bit of that over and uh, fed uh, so many of them. We will also be feeding, um, um, we will also be sending money for the the Afghans as well. This is crucial. This is significant uh, that, that that, that we do that and provide for them. Well, let me say this. Everything that you give to that, we're going to see, we're going to make sure that they get it. We've already sent over $40,000 to help people get out. We also sent some money for relief for food. Uh, we sent about $9,000, I believe it was, over for food specifically. And then uh, uh, the rest of the money has been uh, sent in, and to help our brothers and sisters trying to exit the country uh, before anything else uh, happens to them. The, the the thing, again, if you'll go to the link in our bio, if you'll go, you can even go to my website, Robbie Dawkins. Remember, my name is with a Y, R-O-B-B-Y-D-A-W-K-I-N-S.com. And you can go to our partner page, go to the bottom, to the Middle East Relief Fund, to the Underground Church Fund, and you can give there. That's this. That's that's kind of the least of my concerns at this point. What I want to do is give you points of prayer and point and things that God has spoken. And the first thing is this: is that to understand God can change this situation. This situation can be turned around. Our God is mighty God. He's a powerful God, and we are not going to sit back as the Church of Jesus Christ and let our brothers and sisters be run over and be taken over. I'm telling you, God has angelic armies that are mounted and ready. And I'm going to tell you right now, we need to assign them. We need to be able to pray pray and ask God, give them direction, give them space. My friend uh, Kelly Copeland, uh, Kenneth's daughter, uh, sent a passage this week. And that very night, the night before, I had just been talking to to uh, our guys in Afghanistan. And uh, this passage came to mind and these very words came to mind. And it's Second Kings chapter six. I want to read a little bit of it to you. Uh, my friends at Bethel Church uh, read it last night in their service and prayed uh, several of the points that I'm about to give to you. And I am very grateful uh, to them for doing that. My friend Tom Crandall oversaw that and I'm really appreciative. But it says this in verse 9 of 2 Kings chapter 6, But immediately Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, Do not go near the place of the Armians. They are planning to mobilize their troops there so the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he would be alert there. The king of Armin became very up, uh, upset over this, and he called his officers together, demanding, which of you is a traitor who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? Now, this shows you the power of, of our God. It says, it's not us, my lord, they responded. And one of the officers replied, Elisha, the prophet of is, is a prophet of Israel, tells the king Israel, even the words that you speak in privacy of your bedroom. Now, this is so powerful, and, and, and this is a revelation to this king of how power, realizing we aren't going up against uh, this, this, this nation of Israel itself. We are going up against their almighty God who can devour every enemy that is in their path. Now, listen to this. 
He goes on to say when this, in verse 15, when the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning, he went outside and the troops and horses and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. In verse 16, don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than there are theirs. Then Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw on the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Now, let me tell you something. Can you imagine? I mean, to us, a chariot of fire probably would not be that powerful in our minds. But can you imagine uh, back in those days, there was no chariots of fire. That wasn't something that was done. It says the Armin army advanced towards him. Elisha prayed, oh, Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elisha asked. Now, I'm telling you now, that's the kind of power that we need to release against this military that is there. Now, thank God, this was something that struck them and they were released from as they were really repented in their hearts as there was turnaround. And Elisha, because then he said, it is. It says, as soon as they entered uh, Samaria, Samaria, Elisha prayed, O Lord, now open their eyes and let them see. So the Lord opened their eyes and they discovered that they were in the middle of Samaria. And when the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elisha, my father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? Of course not, Elisha replied. Do not kill prisoners of war. Give them food, give them drink, and a home again for their master, uh, 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 to their master. So let me tell you something. Here's the, here's the bottom line. We need to pray that the Taliban... And I release this as a word from Almighty God that the Taliban and all of its leaders be struck blind until they repent and they turn around and they bow their heads and bow their knees to Jesus Christ as Lord and as Almighty God. And that we would pray that there would be an awareness of our brothers and sisters there on the ground, that they would be aware. We need to see the Taliban leaders begin to have visions of Jesus and to begin to have dreams of Jesus, revealing himself as God to them. That's what they need to see. That's what they need to, to realize. We need to pray against this at point number two. That was point number one. We need to pray against the spirit of death and the spirit of fear that is coming against the church in Afghanistan. It is paralyzing for them right now. Uh, you have to realize, I mean, we one of our guys that we've been training was taken hostage uh, by the Taliban. Um, he was made to watch three other uh, brothers uh, shot and killed in front of his very eyes. God gave him a dream to show him how to escape that night. And he escaped that night. We need God to reveal to our brothers and sisters if there are routes for escape for them to do that, whether it's crossing the Pakistan mountains, whether it's going to other places, whether it's crossing into Iran, no matter where it is that they find a path that the Lord lead them in that path and that direction of where to go, but that we also not see all, you know, God always leaves a remnant. And we need to see that remnant be strong. And so we need to pray courage and holy boldness in our brothers and sisters' faith that they will not bow, that they will not yield, that they will not deny Christ, no matter what they face, that they will stand and they will stand strong and let that speak and strike conviction in the heart of the Taliban. That's what we need to see happen. We need to pray that God would keep them uh, concealed and in, in hiddenness and that there be a spirit of confusion that comes over the Taliban and all those who are working against the Church of Jesus Christ in Afghanistan. You know, David prayed when Absalom had taken over, his son Absalom had taken over. One of his uh, Absalom's uh, advisors was a man called Ahithophel. And David prayed that there would be confusion on Ahithophel's council. And, and that happened. His council was confused. And we pray that in the name of Jesus, we pray confusion on the Taliban council. We pray confusion. We release a spirit of confusion that they, when they look at these lists of Christians that they got from the secret police, that they got from others, that they would be confused about their names, that they wouldn't even be able to read them straight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we release a spirit of confusion over their minds that they would be confused about what they see and not be able to come against our brothers and sisters in this way by the authority of Jesus Christ. 
We also need to pray protection over the women because one of the first things, as I said, they will do is the Taliban will come in and they see the Christian women as free to sexually abuse and to rape. We also need to pray protection and hiddenness over the young girls. They will send them away as child brides. We need to also pray for the young men. I'm going to tell you something now. I have never seen when Ahmadinejad was speaking at Princeton University and he made the comment that there is no homosexuality in Iran. He was a liar. And I'm going to tell you right now, throughout the Muslim world, there is a spirit of homosexuality. I have never seen so much of it throughout uh, Turkey, throughout Iran, throughout Afghanistan, all throughout uh, throughout the Muslim world, there's a, there is a lot of, of, of that that goes on and that's really bad. We need to pray protection because if any of you saw the movie Kite Runner, uh, the little boy was turned into one of the dancing boys. And when they do that, they, they sexually rape those boys. They sexually abuse those boys. And especially if they're infidels, they see them as having no value. So they see, see that as completely fine to do. But we need to pray protection over them and that they not turn these, uh, boys or any of the into these dancing boys and and do these horrific things to them guys god is going to get a victory in afghanistan you mark my word i don't care what foolishness our president has done and it's been very foolish i will go on to say it's been it's it's been ridiculous uh, what has happened we have thrown these poor people under the bus but i'm telling you now the president of the united states is not god almighty the one we serve is almighty god and as the, as the Afghan church says, Isa Shah Shihan, and that is Jesus is King of Kings. And he is King of Kings and he will rule Afghanistan. You mark my word, they will bow, they will surrender. And I am praying that you see it. So you see the power of Almighty God and the whole earth sees the power and the demonstration of what Jesus Christ can do. Guys, we gotta pray, we gotta lift them up, we gotta fight for them. They they have no one fighting for them. They think they've been just thrown out and been discarded. But you and I, my friends, we are the standard. When the scripture says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard. You and I are that standard that God raises. We are the standard that he raises to fight and contend for the breakthrough of our brothers and sisters and to see the most dangerous nation on the planet bow its knee to Isa al Messiah, Jesus the Messiah, Yeshua, and that they that will happen and we will see that transformation. And pray with me now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare Afghanistan a Christian nation, a nation that will follow Jesus, that will bow its knee. We declare every Taliban leader, every Taliban foot soldier will bow and declare Jesus Christ is Lord and become a follower of Jesus Christ. And we declare that there is a breakthrough, that our brothers and sisters in that interim time be hidden, be in obscurity, and not be uncovered. Father, by your authority, we thank you for that breakthrough. We thank you for what you are doing and what you are releasing and that you are using us to partner with our brothers and sisters. This is our family and we stand in solidarity with them and we declare breakthrough for your kingdom and we declare a victory by the mighty name of Jesus. We declare a boldness like lions. Let them have that Acts 3, Acts 4 boldness to where that they will not concede, they will not yield, and they will stand firm, and they will see that holy boldness. Lord, let every house that is called a believing house in Afghanistan, let them shake with the power of the Holy Spirit, and let signs and wonders flow out of them for your great glory and your great honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, victory will be had in Afghanistan, and your name will be spread and advanced, and we will see many missionaries come out of Afghanistan, to the rest of the world and bring them to Jesus Christ as, as the Lord and the Savior and the Master and as God in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank you for praying. Please use these prayer points. We will do what we can to add them in for you to be able uh, to share and to follow. But please, I'm, I'm petitioning you, keep up in prayer, and we will do this again shortly uh, it, here over the next day or so. And, and I want to encourage you, God is on the move. Afghanistan will follow Jesus, and the Taliban will not rule it, but it will be followers of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you guys. I love you, and I thank you for joining. Appreciate you being here, and let's keep praying for our brothers and sisters.